keep your application always stay in a maintainable state as it grows is challenging. It might work for small applications when you don't have to think too much about the structure or the architecture. As more and more features are added in and more people join the project, the architecture will be a block if you don't choose it wisely. So in this video, I'd like to introduce a few common patterns and architectures for you to structure your React applications and to cope with the challenges when as it grows. I will introduce five different architecture styles and each build on top of the previous one. You don't have to choose the final one or the fifth one, but you do need to think about it and assess your current uh, application structure. Maybe you find you are, it's struggling to add new features or you find a fixed box is time consuming. It's very difficult to find the root cause of a defect. In that cases, you will need to assess your current structure and if there are any reshape required. So uh, let's get started. So based on my experience, uh, I have grouped this um, structure into a few levels. So the first one will be uh, very straightforward. It's uh, what I call a single component application. So for application fit into this category, it's, it's, relative, it's very simple. Uh, you don't have much to do with React. You can use React for data fetching or some simple purpose, but nothing beyond that. And then we have multiple component application stage, uh, which will, you found this single component is not fit anymore, or it's, it's kind of difficult to maintain a huge uh, component. You split it into multiple smaller components. And then as your application grow, you will find the state management will be a different, it will be a challenge problem. So you kind of focusing more on the state management by introducing uh, either hooks or some kind of leverage for the state management. Uh, that's the third step. And later on, as you use state management in some way, and um, you will see the benefit of having a separate data model uh, that handling all the data validation, data converting, and um, also maintaining all the data in a central place. So normally it, it, it's, a, it's in a class. And lastly, when you find the whole application is, um, has different parts, like logically and physically, it has different parts. Um, you have folders for the data models, has, uh, has styling and other integration point, like a third party, uh, third party library integration, like login with social media, um, or like cache management, security, logging, all these different parts. So if you man, if you maintain all these um, different parts or in a, or in a single place, it will be very challenging. So it you tend to make them into uh, uh, different layers. Like uh, data model has its own folder. It has its hierarchy in that folder. Uh, Views on the other hand has its own uh, folder structure. It's a little bit abstract to have in this bullet uh, points. So I have a few drawings to demonstrate each stage in more detail. So uh, the first one, as we call it um, a single component, uh, this single component will do the network request to the state manager inside it. It has its domain logic and the rendering, and the, the rendering logic as well. The good example of this kind of um, application will be of a form application that collecting data from uh, you know, doing survey or uh, have some feedback collection. So it's it's very simple. It's roughly a HTML, but in some part of the uh, application, we want kind of uh, dynamic behavior, like um, want to fetch some data dynamically to generate a, a, a code snippet on the page. Um, so React can relieve that um, pain. And uh, there's nothing more than this. It's normally really simple in this stage. You don't have to worry about too much organize the code or, you know, it's just a ad hoc style. You don't need to put any uh, more effort than that. It's just a single component doing all the styling, data fetching and uh, rendering. And so on, we may find it grows too big. And we, we found that if we can split the component into smaller pieces, we can have more uh, uh, reusability. 
uh, for example, we call it a presentational uh, component, like a card, a generic card. You just pass in the data uh, props and it renders exactly as you expected. On the other hand, we have state uh, component or, co or container component that handling the data fetching and uh, um, data shaping uh, logic. So that split can help us to have more reusability and uh, it's more scalable. And as we have smaller uh, presentational component, it's very easy to compose them to finish to complete more complicated scenarios. From this point, we found that if we can extract the state management into its own place, a hook, either in a building hook or in a you know third part library, by this split, we can have more pure presentational component, and that means we again has more reusability and easy to test each component especially for the presentational components you can think of it as a getter and setter object nothing more and nothing less it gives us a lot of freedom to compose them in the way we want with this structure we can handle at least like 80 or 90 percent of the um, usage normally application would be more complicated than this structure can handle but if you are lucky enough, your application keep grows and then you will find the structure might not enough. Either the hook is too big or, you know, some logic is uh, scattered in different places. Like the, the converting is a good example. Like uh, when you fetch data from remote and uh, your component is consuming a data in a, di in a different ship, you will need a converting function somewhere. And uh, if you don't have this structure or like a, if you don't have a architecture structure, uh, the place to hold this will be ad hoc. And that's why we introduced one more thing, which is a data model. So um, data model or domain model is a place to hold all the um, data and uh, generic behavior like the data validation. It doesn't has any uh, you know, outside world knowledge, like uh, how to request, uh, how to send a request, uh, how to talk to the view. It doesn't have any knowledge of that. And the hook on the other hand, um, orchestrating the, you know, data fetching and then invoke the model to come to, uh, to correct the, the correct form of data that the view can consume. So at this stage it's it has, as it has more roles, uh, in the application, it's kind of difficult to get familiar with the whole structure. But as more components introduced into this architecture, you will find it's hard to maintain or remember which is which or what responsibility of each part plays. And then we introduce the last part, which is a layered application. Layered application architecture has been around for quite a while. So basically, the idea is try to split your application by the different responsibilities and you will have a very clear split and in each layer it doesn't have too much knowledge of the outside world and the changing or replacing one layer shouldn't be impact too much on the whole application if you want to replace the view for example here we can replace the hooks and the component to other ui libraries like uh, view or or even backbones or if we want to replace the network library, like we don't use the fetch, the you know the browser um, build in fetch library, we want to use the uh, XOIs, and we can very easily replace that without impact any code on the uh, other layers. And the interesting part of the layered application is you can even further split them into the sub layers. Like in the view, if you want, you can split presentational component or its container component. And the presentational component is likely to be extracted into a design system. And also the domain object or the data model part can be shifted to the backend if you want. We can move that to a BFF uh, to simplify the logic in the front end. I think even the most complicated front-end application can be handled by the layered architecture style because it's, uh, you know, if you find it's too complicated, you can you can even split the folder or shift one part to the backend or, you know, balance the uh, complexity across the system. All right, that's all the five different architecture styles I would like to share today. 
please note that you don't have to use this architecture for your application. Maybe your application is just like a simple enough. You don't have to introduce any uh, architectures or, or, you know, framework. You just use the simple uh, multiple component that can fit your requirement. That's totally fine. You can go with that. Or if you find the, um, you need the data model, uh, like the previous one, uh, that's totally fine to stay here. Unless the current structure is not enough to give your support for your, uh, you know, changes like adding the new features or fixing the existing defects, then you might need to look forward to see if there are any uh, structural uh, changes can help. If you found the diagram is not clear enough, I have a very detailed e example described in this article, and I will put that in the description below. Please let me know how you find it. It's a very long. Uh, articular it's like a, if you print it out it's uh, 42 pages uh, so take your time have a break and please comment below if you have any questions and don't forget to subscribe to the channel turn on the notification and i will see you in next video